Hello everyone. Happy Sunday evening. Gotta get some water. It's going, whew, mouth's already dry. Um, let me share this real quick. And then we'll get started. One day we'll just say we're not sharing. But hey, sharing is caring, right? So, hello, Stephanie. How are you? Good to see you. Um, I want to give some people some time to get on here. Um, I wanted to, I'll read our devotion today and then we'll get into, I want to share one song with you. And then I promise you to get into to what I feel the Lord has asked me to share. I literally wasn't going live tonight. Um, I've been working around the house the last three weeks and and something stopped me and said, uh, yeah, you got something you need to address. <laughs> and often throughout the Bible, I'm not saying I'm some prophet or not, I never will claim that, but the Lord does reveal things to me and I, I test things and the Spirit reveals that. And what I'm going to share is that um, often those prophets, uh, you had uh, Jonah, you have uh, many of the prophets, they're like, Lord, can you send anybody else? I don't want to go say this. And I'll say this, there's often times a lot of people like a pastor, a teacher, or a political person, you now some of them needs their, they need a bridle or <laughs> a muzzle, sorry, uh, but... A lot of times we have to deliver messages that are hard, but they're but you have to approach them in love. It's I'm not sharing this because this is what I want to do and I want to make some people mad or offend or or maybe disappoint some people, but I am the Lord's and the Lord gives me things to say and to care for and I and I sit with them and I'm I'm quick I'm not quick to act, but uh, he has put this on my heart for a week or so, and, and now's the time to share that. So, as we get going, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go and get started. How about that? I feel like I need to just get started. Um, I want to play first. I want to stop, <laughs> and I just want to um, take a minute to think about. All of those that are impacted by COVID right now, all of those that are hurting. Hello, Hannah. Um, all of those. What's up, Coach? Man, good to see some people in here. Um, and Jessica, I see you here. And I want to say, I, I, I am praying for your brother. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your entire family. I know that I don't know, <laughs> but it. I know, as I told you the other day, I know who's in control. And I know sometimes the the outcomes or whatever comes, it's hard at that time because we, we, we don't understand. The Lord is always working for the good of those who love him. And I know your brother and I know your family and y'all love the Lord. So I know that he is in the hands of the Lord. And whatever comes, he and your family will find peace. And you have people around you that are going to love you and encourage you. And I am praying that his family, he, he, needs, he needs to be home. So right now, we, Lord, we just lift up the entire Warren family, uh, Bubba, and an entire Warren family. Because I know that right now is a tough time for many of us. But Lord, what you do is you give us peace that is beyond understanding. You say in John 16, 33, take heart for I have overcome this world and in you we have as well. This is not our home. And Lord, it's hard for us to understand sometimes your ways, okay? Let's just be honest, but we know you are working for the good of all of us that love you. And uh, I just want to give you, um, uh, I pray that your peace overcomes and um, fills the entire family and that you're, you put your hand of uh, protection and 
healing over Bubba and that your will be done. Amen. <sighs> feel much better, but it, it's a heavy, heavy, heavy spirit right now uh, around our world. Uh, this is weekend. I had uh, a, a yard sale and I got to minister to so many people. I'm just like, Lord, this is awesome. It is so awesome. And uh, I was just getting rid of stuff that I didn't need. <laughs> and uh, it really wasn't about that, but just seeing how God connects. And there's people that were there for a, a reason, a divine appointment that uh, only the Lord can explain. So uh, it was a good day um, for that. And, um, uh, this week I'll give you a joke so we can kind of lighten the mood before we get into all that. Uh, I'm not trying to tease you along, but I will get into it because I know what I need to say is a very important, um, not what I need to say, what the Lord says through me. But I was in the attic, I think it was last Sunday, and, um, I stepped on some plywood. Well, that plywood uh, was uh, not the strongest, and well, maybe I wasn't the lightest. Anyways, uh, your boy <laughs> uh, kind of, I didn't fall through the roof, but my foot hit the ceiling, so I'm having to patch that. So I got my Clark Griswold on, and uh, it was it was something. The best part was is that it happened, and I'm like, oh, Lord, thank you. Like, that could have been so bad. So, my, my leg says otherwise. But <laughs> I'm walking down the stairs, and I'm like, oh, okay, everything's good. So, two hours go by, then I finally walk in my laundry room, and I see white, fluffy stuff everywhere. And I'm like, what is that? What What is this? And I look up, and boom. Yeah, so... Um, Eventually, I'll get over to that. But if that's the worst thing that happens, then I know I'm okay. And, you know, the perspective of hearing people fighting for their lives and losing loved ones and those that are battling diseases that are crippling and they're many in pain and addiction and they see no light, it quickly pulls you back into the perspective of I am grateful for just having this breath. I am grateful that the Lord chose me to do, <laughs> to just be a vessel. Have you ever thought about that? That the Lord chose you your, and your weaknesses, he it makes you strong for his purposes. And it's a life that is beyond any life you can understand or have. So if you can, go on and share this too, if you can, if you don't mind. I always forget that. So what I'm getting into tonight is, um, I'll, I'll save the song to the end in case people needed to go. Um, so I'm going to take on one of the statements that I've been reading a lot from both sides. And when I say both sides, I say the, 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 the well, the world, those that truly have not called on the Lord to be their Savior, now, there's people that have called on the Lord to be their Savior, and they don't walk in that way. They don't follow Christ. They don't truly follow Him. They proclaim to be a Christian, and that's not for me to decide. But He calls us to take up our cross daily. He calls us to go where He goes. And a lot of times, if you know the ways of Jesus, He often went where there's pain, where there's darkness, and He brought light, and He brought healing. And he gave those same powers to us. So, the people I'm talking about is all. But as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. And I'm saying this, I'm responsible to me and for me. Okay? And what the Lord gives me, I have to be a steward of. That's my life, I guess, to say. It's no longer I, but Christ in me. That's my body. That's my decisions. That is all the things that he has placed in my hands. And he does give us free will. And he does that because he gives us his spirit as well. And he knows that our spirit, the spirit will lead us. 
those who truly have received that spirit and have not quenched it, but continue to refresh it and renew it daily are the people that know spiritual things. Okay, so I'm going into this, okay? Uh, I've read it numerous places, seen it all over social media uh, of people that I know uh, are proclaimed Christians. And it is my body, my choice. My life, my choice. And I just want to say this, okay? If that is how you feel, you don't know the Lord truly. Because that is the first thing. I'll, I'll, I'll back it with scripture. It says, 1 Corinthians 6 is where we're at. And uh, uh, it goes to, I'll just kind of skip ahead. I was going to read the whole thing, but I also got a lot of other scriptures. So, uh, starting with uh, verse 12, it says, I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. You say food for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know, this is the key, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who, who <laughs> do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Hey, Faith. Good. I got two former students on here, and that makes my day. Let's catch that last part of, do you not know that you are not your own? Do you not know Whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. Continue, verse 18. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. You are not your own. Your life is not your own. Your body is not your own. Have I lived that perfectly? No. Okay? I'm not sitting here saying that. I'm not the one you're judging against. Your neighbor is not, and your parents, or your best friend, or the person on social media, or the people that do not know the Lord, we expect that. But I'm calling on those that do know the Lord. Or do you? Do you not know? Because, see, statements like that, you are not your own. So, with that said, I'm not going into, I have people that have uh, taken a certain thing. I can't say it because they'll knock me off. And I have people that haven't. And I know I have friends that have. And I know friends that haven't. And I know, I know family that has and family that hasn't. And, and the thing is, is often I have people come to me and say, where do you stand with this? What does it matter where I stand? I'm not the Lord. <laughs> what I would tell you is to go to the Lord, seek his face, Get to know him, and his spirit will teach you. His spirit will tell you. His spirit will convict you. Now, I, I'm not, not being any certain way. As I always say, I stay free. I have 
what the Lord has taught me, how the Lord uh, reveals spiritual things to me, okay? I don't go around sharing all that with everybody because unless the Lord tells me. And tonight, he's telling me. And he's telling me this because enough is enough. I would say this, don't come to me. <laughs> I will help you. I will, I will look at different ways, but who am I to say what the Lord is revealing to you? Who am I to say? Just like I say when we say prayer, I say, how can, we, how can I pray with you? I want to bring you into this. Those of the Lord know that we're one body, so we need to bring you in. I'm, I, I don't want to do it for you. You teach a man, okay, you, you feed a man a fish one day, right? But you teach a man to fish and you feed him for many days. What we do as Christians is we live the truth that has been revealed to us and the truth that we follow, and that is Christ. He is the truth, the way, the life, right? So, you know how I've come to, to know the Lord and to have the things that he has shared with me, what some would call wisdom, is because I didn't go to everybody in the world for answers. I let the question send me on a quest to the one who has the solution, and it's not anybody of this earth. There is a difference. I used to do this as teacher too. <laughs> give me the answer, give me, no, you seek. See, that's part of it, is seeking his face, seeking the word, getting in the word. Now, a lot of people will say, okay, well, the, the word, okay, get in your Bible. Well, I'll tell you this, if you don't get, if you go into his word and you do not have the spirit yet, you will use it as a weapon. And a lot of times you will use it wrongly. And that's why you have people like this. I'll, I'll say it. Uh, let's go to Matthew 18. Calls in, uh, let's go Matthew 18, verse 8. It says, if your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed and crippled to have two hands or two feet and be thrown in eternal hell or eternal fire, sorry. If your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown in the fire of hell. Okay, I need those people that come and bring you that verse and judgment. Why is your eye not plucked out? Why is your arm not cut off? There's a literal statements. And what that, now the spirit in me says, no, Jay, he does not want you to gouge your eye out of the temple. What he is saying is, if that is a problem, you address it. It's that, go back and say, it's that person that points to the, the splinter in the brother's eye and has a huge log cabin in their own. That is a hypocrite and a Pharisee. And it happens every day. I wake up, if I don't get right with the Lord, I will live out of that. I will judge everybody. I will be comparing my standard to this world and not of the world the kingdom, the eternal the kingdom, and what Jesus says. And you know what I've also come to know? Is that people like Stephen McWhorter, people like Joel, good friends of me, people that truly have that with the Lord to say, and they go and they create stuff and they do messages, you will never see them get a million likes or two million or followers. You know, Jesus had a lot of followers or fans until he truly showed them and said, 
hey, you're going to have to follow. That means you're going to have to leave everything. Oh, I don't, I'm not into that. What does it cost you? And so, you know, a lot of times I say this, and I do these videos because there is that one that will hear it. There's that one that will quicken that spirit. And you know that it is not right to judge another brother or sister. You are to test, not judge. You are to test yourself first. Okay? So, let me go on into this. If you don't have the Spirit, the Spirit is everything. Let me just, let me just share with the, there's some scripture here. Okay, first thing here. 1 John 2.27 says, As for you, the anointing which you receive from him abides in you, and you have no need for anyone to teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you abide in him. That's what I, like... Don't come to, like, I'll, I'll, I'll support you. We are to, I, I want the best for you, but I want you, I don't want to tell you the answers. Who am I to not tell you? Go and seek him. I will walk with you. I will encourage you. But I can't sit there unless you have that spirit right. It's like seeing stuff. You see the kingdom all around you. You see Christ in everything. You see Christ all around because you have had your heart enlightened. You have the spirit that teaches and reveals and searches the deepest parts of your soul and your heart. And so, therefore, if you go and point to someone that doesn't have it, they don't see it. And you can say, this Lord, turn my darkness, the worst thing in my life, to light. And that is where faith is found. Hello. Celine. I think I'm preaching. I don't know. Maybe I'm not. But anyways, I'm glad to see you on here. 1 Corinthians 2.10 For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, and for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. 1 Corinthians 2.13, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. See, I, as a, as a minister, as a proclaimer of the gospel, someone that shares the good news, I have to walk in that. I have to test myself or check my witness. Have I got it right all the time? No. Have I repented of that? Yes. Have I admitted that wrong to others? Yes. That's what you're called to do. And see, the things that are hidden in darkness will be brought to light. And it says those things that are Exposed to the light, become light itself. If you want to become a light to this world in a dark world, you need to discover the darkness that you have hidden from others and yourself. And how do you do that? You hold it up to the light. And Jesus will reveal it. And then sometimes it, it it's... It's hard, but I'll tell you this, he does it in a loving way. Just like the prodigal son that comes home, he's done it all wrong, but he, he, he learned that, hey, I got this messed up. I did it wrong. And the father met him running. And then you have the one that's done it all right his whole life. He's bitter, he's mad, his brother came home, the screw-up brother, the one that done it wrong. 
I'm sure you felt, we've, been, we've all been on this. See how the Jesus teaching, like you should be able to see yourself in all of these parables because the spirit reveals that. I have been the brother that got it messed up. I have been the brother that thought I've got it all right. And I've also been the father to say of uh, the one that is with open arms to a brother or sister that has knows they were not walking in the light and now they've come home and we're gonna celebrate. We're not gonna shame, we're gonna celebrate. Because you know what, now we have another brother in the body or a sister. The enemy wants you to hide in your shame. He wants you to keep it hidden. He wants you to be ashamed. He wants you to shame others. Because let's just be honest, shame, hurt people, hurt people. Transform people, lead others to transformation through Christ. Okay, moving on to, listen to this, Isaiah 11, 2. <laughs> Uh, the, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. I don't, I'm not scared of the Lord, but I'm in fear of him because I know it. one thing, he can just, he can, he can bring the wrath and he will. And I live no longer I, but Christ lives in me. Isaiah 30, 21, it says, your ears will hear a word behind you. This is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right or to the left, others that don't have that spirit, you hear the enemy and you're being deceived. Do I get it right all the time? No. But I acknowledge, I try, and everything I do, hey, Lord, I'm trying to walk in the path of your way. I'm trying. I want my decision to lead me to you, to your way. And sometimes I'll get a little voice. I'll get a little nudge. I'll get an affirmation. And sometimes I won't get anything. But you know what? I know, he knows, that I acknowledged him and I'll walk that path. And he will work it all for the good of those who love him. And he knows I love him. He knows it. Holy Spirit as a teacher, John 14, 26, it says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and to bring you, bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Can we think about the biblical times? Well, well let's say biblical times. The people that are in the Bible, they didn't have the Bible. We do. But a lot of us don't have the Spirit. They had the Spirit. And he taught them and he revealed to them and he gave them knowledge when they needed it. And he says, don't worry about when they'll drag you before the synagogues and the rulers. I will put the words into your mouth. How powerful is that? Hi, Andrea. Um, for one, uh, let's go on to 1 Corinthians 12, 8. Uh, for, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to the other the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit. But, going on to 1 Corinthians 2, 14, but a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. That's what you have right now. You have... There's people that, they're atheists. They're, there's no God to them, okay? But there's those people that proclaim 
there is a Jesus. Now, Satan will tell you, too, that there was a Jesus and that there's a God. Okay? That doesn't mean that he's believing. He, he puts all his trust in him. No. And some of us have been deceived because we have let God into our heart. But no, he wants to give you a new one. He wants to take your heart out and give you a new one. Ask Ezekiel. I'll remove the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. So what I'm saying is the natural man is still someone without the spirit. So you have these people, but a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. If you have the Spirit, you know exactly what I'm saying. You know that, well, not what I'm saying. First Corinthians, Paul saying, there's people that, that don't get it. There's nothing I can do. All I can be is as spirit-filled as I can, pray for them, um, be with them, encourage them, but also tell them I'm not the answer. No, you go to the answer, and it's Jesus, the Spirit. Okay, I'm, I'm moving on. Um I went through all those, I think. So, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, the last thing I want to leave you with, sorry, I'm going to go through the comments too. I'm bad about that, but when I get in, I get easily distracted. So I'm not ignoring you. I will go back and read the comments, I promise. And uh, I would love to talk with you. Um, because, look, we are, our world is saturated with knowledge, okay? Now, what is wrong is there's a lot of people without the Spirit. There's a lot of people with a lot of knowledge that has never truly been transformed. So what that does is it makes us believe we have the knowledge, right? We have the truth. No, Jesus is the truth. I, I can't say I have the truth. He has me. <laughs> and he shares little by little. Sometimes a lot. Sometimes he'll put words in my mouth. Sometimes he'll lead me somewhere where I was not going to be there. And for whatever reason, I will find out eventually why I was there. And it's for his purposes, not mine. But are you, are you too wrapped up in this world or wrapped up into what people think of you or people are going to say to truly walk and follow the Lord and, and be different? We need a bunch of people that are okay being different because there's no one's created the same. You are either conformed to this world or you're transformed out of this world. I think I said that right. You get what I'm saying? What are you conforming to? Be the change, be the change that you wish to see. And so now when I go back to this with the topic I was saying, I stay free. I will never, if someone asks me, it's not your business. Now I'll share with the people that I want, but it's not your business. Okay. Now that's between me and the Lord. And you may mock me. You may think I'm crazy. That's okay. I'm, I signed up for it. He said, you will be rejected as I was rejected. That's okay. But one day, you'll know. One day, he will be revealed. So what I'm saying is, as, a, as someone that does ministry, I keep myself free in Christ. I don't cling to one side or the other. Okay, he is the judge. He's the judge. Now, I, I stand in the truth of, of the best I can. And that's, if you stand in the truth, you know that means you're standing in Christ. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
that just came to me, but it's true. No, you can't stand in the truth and, and claim this to be the whole truth, right? Now, there's a lot that is inspired. But what about those people that didn't have this? What if tomorrow these are gone? Who's going to teach you? Who's going to lead you? What you what you follow, what you what it you are led by, you become, right? So you want to become more Christ like, follow make sure you follow Christ. If you don't know what that means, learn. Ask right now, Lord, maybe I have committed my life to you to say, but I didn't truly understand. And instead I've lived my life somewhat apart from you. I don't find this rich, um, this re uh, peace and this power and this, this just overwhelming presence of your, of your goodness in my life. So right now I ask that I truly surrender my life. It's no longer I, I give my life. It says in Matthew, sorry, says in Matthew, um, Lord knows, Matthew 16, 25, it says, For whoever wants to save their life, you said this, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But for whoever loses their life for me will find it. So Lord, I pray for loosening of anybody that is being deceived or living outside of you. And they truly are trying, but they have never surrendered and understood that you hold it all and in you you provide everything we need we may lose everything but then we find everything that we have ever needed in you and i pray that someone has courage to message me or to walk along but i'm pointing them to you lord you are the counselor you are lord not i but Lord, I would love to walk with them and help them find true life and abundance in you. Amen. Now that's a normal for me. I, if anybody knows me, I, I rarely pray live to say publicly, but um, the Lord told me to. I think that's three times a night. So if you're on here, it's for a reason. And you may know more knowledge than me. I, that's not saying anything. It's never that about me. I don't have all the answers. All I do know is that the Lord has taught me. He teaches me daily. When I mess up, He's there. When I'm doing great, <laughs> and I feel like it's all me, you know what, he, he's, he's cheering me on, but he knows that eventually I'll come around and say, Lord, I'm sorry, that was you, not me. And he knows right now this world is hard, and he sees you, and he loves you, and he wants to give you life and peace that surpasses all understanding, that no matter what comes, no matter what comes, you are hidden in him. And you know that this world is not eternal. And there's hope on the horizon every day, every second, every minute. And I, I wrote this prayer today. I said, I said this. I wrote it the other day when I was having my yard sale. And I hope this sticks with you. This will be the last thing. But I wrote, I trust you, Lord, with all I have, because all I have is yours. This house is not mine. My life isn't my own. My body isn't my own. His spirit tells me, hey, mm-mm. Or, hey, mm-mm, but you messed up or whatever. But I know that I'm taking him everywhere I go. He's in me. And I in him. I can't help but take Christ wherever I go. 
<laughs> if Christ ain't allowed, then I guess I'm not. And see, last thing, I had this talk with my neighbor the other day. A world, see, we want to talk about God. You know, people are taking God out of school. God is not in this country. No, yes and no. But I want to ask you this. You know, I hear that all the time from people and parents. But let me just ask you this, and I don't mean this in the wrong way, but when's the last time, you know, my child can't pray? In, in school okay does your child pray do y'all pray at home and a lot of you will say yes okay great but it starts there like quit blaming what's wrong is this world we've 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 worried about our neighbor and we've we want to judge them and while our house is burning down our temple's burning down and is filled and defiled our own home and our family but we're looking at the others and judging. And it's like, as for me and my home, Joshua said, we will serve the Lord. You want to clean your life up. You want to clean your family. First, it starts with you. First, it starts with how you live, the choices you make, what you put first. They will start seeing, but they're not going to see someone that has all the words, yet they know every day you're not, Lord's not first in your life. Our nation is one under God, right? But see, the problem is our nation has forgotten their first true love. And it's no longer a nation under God, it's a nation above God. And he will not stand that for that. And we have people that are calling this and saying this and saying all your stuff that you own, all this stuff is separating you from the love, your first love. And you know that one more isn't going to help. You know that what you go by isn't going to make you happy. True happiness, true joy is found in the Lord. All right. So I uh, hope everyone has a great week. I want to um, remind you that this week you have the ability, Christ in you, to walk and to, to walk in his way, to be a light, to bring peace. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever been around someone that is just peaceful? It's because they've had that time with the Lord and they've probably had that ugly moment earlier in the day and they got it all out and gave it to the Lord and now they're at peace. You can bring peace to your home. Find peace in the Lord. Quit trying to... You need to calm down. You. Hmm. Anyways... It is not your body, and it's not your choice. It's his body, his choice. And when I say that, it's his spirit. And I don't know what he says to you. And I, therefore, I won't judge you. But also, as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, we are called to test things, to test all things, and to ask for the Spirit to discern. So, I just had to share that. And the Lord put it on my heart. Now, that's a hard, some of you may be like that. Well, that's the thing, is I'm not, I'm not drawing you in to polarity. I'm not, I'm not about dividing, I'm about unifying. But I know this, there's only one true united body and that is Christ he unites his spirit nothing else but I'm not going to divide I'm going to unite and we should all be united you know the United States it starts with us it starts with our country or wherever you live it starts with your house 
So, love y'all. Remember, every Sunday night, I'll be live, Lord willing. And in a couple months, or sorry, a couple weeks, I really hope you come and join us on this new adventure. We're going to start on Sunday evening. So, there's going to be a gathering. And it's not going to be a church service, but it's going to be a message. And it's going to be um, small groups in one place. And we're going to get into the Word, and we're going to disciple one another, and we're going to lead one another, and we're going to encourage one another, and we're going to build up one another. As First Thessalonians say, build up and encourage one another, and don't tear down. And then, I trust the Lord will do what He can only do. But the Lord has put this on my heart. And uh, don't ask me to explain it, because I can't. <laughs> but... Come and be a part of it. It's going to be national. It's going to be people that are broken, people that can be ministered to. So you can go to your, do your usual Sunday thing and then have people we can gather again and really truly dig into his word. As I told my student earlier, Aaron, he told me, I told him to remind me, I probably did and I was not reading it. He said, I'll be attending tonight. And I said, that's awesome. But, then I was like, oh, here comes, that's a reminder from the Lord. There is a difference in attending church and participating in the work of the Lord. There's a difference in attending life and participating in life. There's a difference in attending in Christ and participating in Christ. And what that means is that you're seeking, you're searching, you're learning, you're, you're open to be used by the Lord. You're, anybody can attend. We've come an attendant, but we're not really attendant. <laughs> but participate. Oh, you don't have what it takes. No, you do. <laughs> do you have a weakness? Do you have a lot of them? That's great. Ask Paul, the guy that wrote most of the New Testament. He had a lot of weaknesses. He had one that would not go away. It was this thorn. And he asked the Lord numerous times. And he says, therefore, in the Lord, where I'm weak, he is strong. That is the power of Jesus. That is the power of Christ. He takes your weaknesses. He knows you. <laughs> and he gives you the power. And you're like, it's amazing. But you have to know that you're, you have a weakness. You have probably a lot. I have thousands, <laughs> but you know what? I have one strength that surpasses all those weaknesses, and that's the Spirit of the Lord. I love you. If we can pray for you, seriously, go to praywithme.us. We have a digital prayer board that's 24-7, and we have a warrior team on there that checks that, including myself, and praying and encouraging and we want to be there for you so we love you and uh we'll see you back next sunday evening at seven central time uh, may god's peace be yours and i'm going to go back through these messages and i will be in touch with those that have asked uh, for that so good night